let it happen. Oh God, Isabella, about Jim Scully's sarcophagus of identity. Okay, so uh, if you don't mind, I will sp switch to English so that um, Jim uh, can understand me one-on-one. -on -one. So uh, this is the book that, um, as I understand, is a result of years and years of experience, living, uh, thinking, reading, and writing. Um, I, uh, I, when I was preparing this, um, this uh, introduction, uh, I read this for the second time. I read it in an earlier stage, and now I read it again. Um, it's a very interesting uh, um, book that is highly autobiographical. It's written in the first person singular, uh, most chapters at least. And it's a, it's a theoretically dense book of self-exploration. And uh, it's written by a, a wonderful storyteller. So that's, it's, it's actually woven together from, from several little stories. And there is one master story uh, in, in, this, in the center of it, which is um, uh, Jim's um, uh, experience in the United States uh, Navy and him uh, ending up being a um, conscientious uh, objector to the Vietnam War and then filing a lawsuit against the US Secretary of Defense in um, San Diego. And uh, so, uh, I mean, we, you can read the book in different ways. And um, you can read it as, as oh, well, it's a, a very kind of educated autobiography. Like a, a person who is highly analytical, uh, highly um, um, capable of of uh, instilling his experiences and elevating those experiences to the level of the theoretical. Uh, you could read it as, as a theoretical account on identity and identities and using a, a personal life story or a personal experience to uh, feed into those theories. Uh, you can read it as, as um, because the chapters are written such where, where you get the personal story right off from the beginning. The acknowledgments, are, even those are written in a kind of a chronological order, giving the life events and thanking people that are um, associated with each and every life stage, place, uh, and um, life phase that the author was living. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's very interesting the way he weaves in the personal and the, and the theoretical. And that I found very innovative in it. And I myself am an oral historian. I like, I like personal stories. But for an oral historian, this is a, this is a, a, a weird combo when somebody is so analytical and somebody can put his own life under the microscope and, and uh, take three steps back, five steps back, and, and, um, and uh, uh, illuminate certain aspects in such a theoretical way. OK, I would like to talk about three things, identity, storytelling, and the individual and the collective, uh, because, um, well, I know that uh, Jim is always very critical. He's very critical about paradigms of thought of theoretical schools. Uh, he's always, he always wants us to question uh, existing um, paradigms. And uh, in this way, I think this is a, a community where he feels at home. And, uh, but um, so identity, which is in the title, and the, the title itself is, I think, is very conscious. Uh, for, 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 for James Kelly, the like, identity is something that is negative, I would say, from the book. And you will say if I got it right or not. 
uh, for me, um, it's something very negative. Is it stands for categorization, either done by others and you, the individual, being labeled as something con constantly throughout our lives, uh, or on the other way, on the other side, we are doing it ourselves. We are our own imprisoning agents as well. And um, in this sense, um, uh, I don't know what kind of positive connotations uh, uh, we could uh, give uh, the concept of identity. Um, and he says that language and discourse has a, has a socializational force. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, um, uh, um, basically language is what socializes us into these categories, which we, during our own socializational process, we uh, start to identify with and we start to kind of um, accept and view ourselves as. Um, uh, he doesn't really do it explicitly, but there is a kind of body of literature that, that he gets into conversations with. A lot of people would probably read his book as not so much about identity, but more about subjectivity because identity is more of a psychological construct, it's more of a psychological concept, and uh, identity is usually um, something that we construct in the negative of something else. So as a, it's in a kind of dichotomy, but uh, subjectivity is mostly viewed as, as um, uh, overwrought with power, and it's, it's our way of being put, placed into social positions incessantly, and it changes all the time. So I wonder if there is a, a um, kind of, uh, if you get engaged in this conversation, if you would like to, or if, if you think it's at the, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter how we call it and what it is, but, the, but what matters is, um, who puts you into certain categories and how you get out of them. Okay, and then uh, I would like to um, talk about storytelling quickly because that's what he does. He actually tells a story throughout the book and it's, it's a, using little anecdotes just like, just like um, you know, a fictional piece or, or, or just a very kind of, um, uh, uh, I, I, I thought about sometimes I thought about magical realist novels actually when I was reading some of the some of the stories I was like this can't be real this this can't be true but um, who knows <laughs> and um, and it is also uh, almost a common place to say that whenever we tell stories we construct versions of ourselves and we present those versions to our audience which, um, which um, is sometimes not consciously done, sometimes it is very deliberately done so. And there is a, a, a battlefield of discourse uh, in which one who, who gets to shape it will get to define who the actors and the characters are as well. So, um, and Skelly says at one point, throughout our lives, others keep demanding that we explain ourselves. So we tell a story. And if you don't tell a story, if you remain silent, they'll make one up. Your blank face is written on. So, uh, and in this sense, I, I found my connection to history. Because who else would know this better than people, who, people and peoples who, who are without history, who, who have never gotten a chance to, to write their own story, to tell their own story, and thus define who they are. And um, here comes another interesting thing. For him, I don't think there, there is a true authentic story either. Uh, and this is a very kind of um, deconstructionist uh, view uh, that uh, fiction writers and historians also demonstrate in their writing. 
there, there is no such a thing as a true story reflecting some true inner self or core. Even if there is a core, there is no way we can know it or get to it under layers upon layers of language and discourse. Uh, he, he says, if I had simply let others tell stories about me with no response from the defendant, so to speak, I would have been judged guilty or less rarely saintly according to their definition of my life. If on the other hand I had told the story about myself that I had somehow become convinced was true, I was merely doing what they were doing but from the inside out rather than from the outside in. I was either their prisoner or my home. And I found this a great um, sentence. Uh, and then uh, lastly, uh, the individual versus collective, because I, I do think that he didn't write, um, one, yeah, yeah, maybe if, if, if somebody would read, uh, just like with any autobiography, you could say, oh, he's so self-absorbed, or she's so self-absorbed. But no, I mean, the, none of these stories are for themselves. These, this is, these, he tells the stories to talk about the collective, he, to talk about the relationship of the individual to the community that he's placed in, to talk about the relationship of the individual to the state, to the power of the state, and also to, to try to find ways in which to interpret uh, the possibilities that an individual has to, to kind of defy uh, structures of power, to find some ways of expressing agency, and uh, also the limits that the individual has. And uh, what I found was very interesting that um, uh, sometimes what one think of, uh, thinks of as a small indirect intervention against structures of power, like in James Scott's uh, The Weapons of the Weak, uh, can, we have, can have a profound transformative effect that goes well beyond the individual when it becomes a public act or publicly known act. In this context, it is it is it is very interesting, and um, uh, that so we read an account of a former soldier, which Jim used to be. So he used to be part of this killing machinery of of the aggressor, <laughs> analyzing himself and his actions in the framework that Scott would probably have meant for the Vietnamese week. Uh, in this sense, Skelly subverts even our own presuppositions of, uh, about powerlessness and who, par who the power powerless is and, and how that mm, di uh, dichotomy or, uh, is constructed. So I found that also an interesting uh, uh, aspect of the book. And um, finally, the fact that he writes these stories, um, even though they are very much embedded in, in one specific time and place in history, but he tries to elevate it to, a, to some degree of timelessness, or at least he writes it for the future generation. And I was a reader, I, I am a reader of that, one of the coming generation, or maybe not, I don't know, maybe. But um, I felt it was written also for me, for, for what I can do in this century, for, for, for this time period. And he says, by themselves, the stories of these experiences give us little insight. Instead, it is what I think I can extrapolate from some of these experiences, supported to some extent by scholarly research, quote, quote, in sections of this monograph, which provides me and hopefully the reader with some degree of insight into our or individual and collective confusions. Overall, one can see it as a kind of mapping project that might show us where, I, where we've been, where we are, and how we might reach a more felicitous location in the future. Uh, as a reader, equipped with much of the theoretical uh, uh, literature and knowledge and lacking these experiences, I've never I've never experienced these kind of things, ever. Uh, but I, I, um, having read the book, I'm, I'm still not quite sure I have the handle on 
how to reach this more felicitous location or how to make a more happier, uh, like a happier world or a happier time. I'm not sure, but the takeaways that I have from this book is that a relentless questioning of seemingly fixed and unchangeable truths, an incessant critique of an, the existing status quo, the urge to defy categories, the fierce love of life and respect thereof, and of course, always living and telling it with much irony and laughter, because the power of interpretation can still be our own at times, sometimes. It is available downstairs.